Hi, I will talk about neurons. Neurons are cells that form the basis of the nervous system. The human brain has approximately 100 billion of neurons that connect up more than 100 trillion points. The neuron itself consists of dendrites, axon, and axon terminal. This is the cell body. Here you can see how the neurons connect with uh, each other. One neuron will have more than many points of connection. Here you can see the comparison between Alzheimer's neurons and healthy cells. These are the healthy cells and these are the Alzheimer's cells, uh, which has um, tangles and plaques that form out. Here, uh, I will show you how the axon carries the electrical pulse. First of all, this is the axon. The sodium ions are outside of the cells and the potassium ions are inside of the cells. There is a lot of uh, potassium and sodium channels in the membrane. So uh, when the cell is in the resting membrane potential, it is at minus 70 millivolts. Here you can see the chart. This is the minus 70 millivolts. It, it is in the resting membrane potential. And when it goes up, when it becomes more positive, this is called the depolarization. And when it reaches its peak, it will go down. And this is called the repolarization which is uh, when the cell tries to uh, go to the resting membrane potential level. And this is the threshold. It is like at minus 50 millivolts approximately. So here we have this picture of the normal, of the resting membrane potential. Everything is normal and when and in stimulation occurs, the depolarization begins. The depolarization causes the sodium channels to open and so the so sodium ions will rush into the cells that uh, in a level that cannot be stopped. So this is called the threshold. It reaches the minus 55 millivolts. It will become more and more and more positive. This is where the action potential begins. So here you can see the, the propagation of the action po uh, potential. It will only go in one direction. It, will, it won't come back. And so the uh, depolarization also slowly causes the sodium sol channels to close and it will open the potassium channels. So the potassium will rush out of the cells, causing the cell more negative. As you can see in this uh, picture, uh, it is coming down and this is called the repolarization. So uh, this is a cycle. It will occur, uh, it, it occurs uh, really fast. Here we can see how the action potential propagates. It will only go in one direction because when this place occurs, the depolarization, uh, this place will become inactive and so the action potential will only go that way. It will only go forward. Synapse. Synapse is where two neurons connect. Here, as you can see, uh, this is called the presynaptic, and this is called the postsynaptic, and this is the synaptic plane. These are called the uh, vesicle that has neurotransmitters, and when it fuses with the membrane of the presynaptic, uh, the neurotransmitter will bind with the receptors, and this is how the neurons connect, uh, communicate with each other. 
So synaptic loss is very common in patients with AD, A Alzheimer's disease. Synaptic loss causes several disconnection and the incapacity of processing thoughts. Aging itself causes synaptic loss, but in mild Alzheimer's disease, synaptic loss can cause uh, by the reduction of 25% of the uh, vesicles. And, all, and also, the amyloid beta can trigger uh, this synaptic loss. We are going to talk about it later. Okay, so uh, we're just going to start off with a quick review of protein synthesis. Uh, we'll have a number of enzymes that come in here, and I'm not going to get too in-depth, so I don't overstep the bounds of other people's projects, but we're going to have enzymes that unwind the DNA strand, and uh, your main enzyme here is RNA transcriptase, which will come in onto, the, uh, onto one of the DNA strands, and it will transcribe, at, uh, as the name suggests, the anticodon starting from the start codon for a specific DNA sequence. And in the process, uh, what is known as an mRNA or messenger RNA will be produced, and afterwards, as, 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 the, uh, as the enzymes move along the length of the DNA strand, it will unwind and wind as it, as it goes along. And this mRNA is then tra transported to the ribosome where <clears throat> it is uh, fed through a little hole. And if you look at the actual structure for a ribosomal uh, molecule, you'll see there's a, there's a physical hole where the mRNA is fed through. And you'll find these, uh, these tRNA which are uh, w which will have the anticodons to whatever's coded for on the mRNA, and the tRNA are attached to amino acids on the other end, and these are then linked together through peptide bonds, which will ultimately form the uh, the protein chain. And uh, once once the chain of amino acids is uh, released from the ribosome, it will then subsequently fold into whatever structure it is coded for. I also think it's worth uh, clarifying what exactly dementia is, because I know personally when we came in, we were under the impression that dementia is a separate disease, which it actually is not. Dementia is simply just uh, degradation of, of the brain, whether that be from infection or age, and this leads to adverse effects such as memory loss, cognitive impairment, etc. Um, Alzheimer's disease, as you can see from this graphic, is the most common type of dementia, and that's what we'll be addressing in our presentation. Okay, so uh, a quick overview of what Alzheimer's disease exactly is. Uh, it, it develops most of the time after the age of 60, or that's when uh, symptoms actually begin to appear. And uh, experts suggest that there may be as many as 5.1 million Americans with Alzheimer's. Now, that is just an estimation because some of the symptoms of Alzheimer's overlap with other things such as Parkinson's or stroke because they do affect the brain and some of the symptoms you see will be the same. Um, it is irreversible and it's formed by uh, abnormal clumps called uh, amyloid plaques which we'll discuss later and uh, tangled bundles of fibers called neurofibrillary tangles and uh, it's also due to synaptic degradation so Synapses are the connections between neurons, as we discussed, and as these degrade, the brain functions uh, not as efficiently as it can. Now, over time, neurons will lose their ability to function efficiently anyways, but uh, with Alzheimer's, this damage also spreads to the hippocampus, which is involved in memory, and this is why we see uh, memory problems in people with Alzheimer's. So. The early warning signs are just simple, mild cognitive impairment, uh, a diminished sense of smell, which is actually localized in the temporal lobe of the brain, which is where, where the temple is on the side, um, difficulties in movement, difficulties in cognition, which means uh, word finding, spatial visual problems, and reasoning. Uh, at the mild stage, you'll see Alzheimer's patients often get lost, uh, have trouble paying paying bills, handling money, they repeat questions, and they just struggle with everyday tasks. Now once you progress into the moderate stage, the damage uh, uh, spreads to the brain areas that control language and reasoning, sensory processing, 
and conscious thought. So you'll see a lot of memory loss, confusion, problems recognizing family and friends, and uh, Alzheimer's patients at this stage will actually be unable to learn new things often, and they'll have difficulty carrying out tasks that involve multiple steps. And uh, this is actually, people are often diagnosed in either the mild or the moderate stage. Um, and in the severe stage, we see these plaques and tangles spread all throughout the brain, and the brain tissue shrinks significantly. As we can see from this picture, uh, the severe Alzheimer's disease brain is significantly smaller in all of the areas described compared to a healthy brain. And uh, this is also due to age-related changes. Uh, the atrophy of the brain is, is a natural thing over time, but uh, there's also the production of unstable molecules called free radicals, and this increases during Alzheimer's disease. Now, free radical is just, uh, yeah, as you can see, it's just a, a chemical with, with an unpaired electron. And these are highly unstable molecules, so they cause uh, chain reactions in the body and often damage important molecules such as DNA because they will, they'll cause a reaction with the DNA and cause uh, problems with the DNA. So studies have linked Alzheimer's to uh, a number of proteins, including a polypoprotein E, and uh, version 2 of this gene is actually thought to protect against Alzheimer's. Version 3 is the normal uh, genotype, which actually uh, is used in the, in the ca catabolysis of lipoproteins. And then version 4 is what causes early onset Alzheimer's, and this is thought to be genetic. Um, so we can see the chromosomes that Alzheimer's is located on are all the ones indicated here. And it's, it, this is not a well understood mechanism here, but there is some genetic component to uh, Alzheimer's, especially early onset Alzheimer's. Now, uh, the final thing I wanna talk about is uh, treatment of Alzheimer's, which is uh, done through, the, uh, through molecules which are acetylcholine stearase inhibitors. So uh, what it, acetylcholine stearase does basically is it removes acetylcholine from the synaptic, synaptic cleft. And uh, the, the problem with that is that leads to a lot of the Alzheimer's symptoms. So what these drugs do is actually they, uh, they prevent the, the breakdown of acetylcholine in this cleft and this leads to higher levels of acetylcholine in the brain which ultimately leads to uh, at least a delay of Alzheimer's, but it is not curable. Also, uh, a quick review of mitochondria before we move on. Uh, mitochondria, as you can see, it's that molecule in the top right. It has an outer membrane and an inner membrane, which is folded into cristae, and uh, this is just to increase the, the surface area for, for uh, proteins and other things to fit into the membrane. Now, mitochondria is involved in cellular respiration. This is probably a review about biology for a lot of people. But, uh, so, so we're not gonna get very in depth, but essentially it's responsible for the, uh, the Krebs citric acid cycle and the, uh, the electron transport chain, which are our body's main sources of uh, synthesizing ATP, which is the fuel for most molecular processes in the body. Also, uh, mitochondria is at the heart of apoptosis which is why it's related to uh, Alzheimer's disease. Uh, and the, it, it, is, it is involved in the regulation of caspases. Uh, and th this is something that, this is a, a disputed mechanism, but uh, we will discuss this later. So now we're going to be talking about mitochondria, mitochondrial DNA, and its connection to Alzheimer's disease in a little more depth. Pro essentially within the mitochondria, as we stated, proteins can be folded overall. Um, this folding has connections to um, mitochondrial DNA. Mitochondrial DNA specifically work to code the, within the mitochondria for this, for this folding. And the mitochondrial length, or mitochondrial DNA length, excuse me, is short enough to the point that um, any really mutations or stresses to it can cause major uh, disruptions within the mitochondrial DNA itself. And these disruptions, such as um, mutations within the DNA, which are commonly found in five to nine kilobyte lengths, will cause, uh, will cause um, misfolding of the proteins. 
many times these mutations or these stresses can, can be caused by oxidative stresses, um, misregulation of the empty DNA, and accelerated input of proteins. Essentially what happens when empty DNA is misregulated or the mitochondrial um, is unable to properly fold proteins is that the proteins will enter the mitochondria and be taken in by um, chaperone proteins such as HSP16, HSP70. Such proteins will then work to fold the, pro fold the proteins in a way that the cell can use them and it will code properly within the cell. If this doesn't happen and the proteins are misfolded, the cell cannot properly use them and it will cause um, a lot of problems within the cell. And, says, and with Alzheimer's, this occurs mostly within the uh, neurons of individuals. As these proteins will then, these proteins can then leave the cell, <coughs> excuse me, they leave the mitochondria, and many times within the mitochondria, if the proteins are misfolded and they, sometimes they cannot leave, um, stress pathways are upregulated. With the stress pathways, this mitochondria begins to um, become unable to properly fold proteins. The proteins might become longer in length, too, too long for the proteasome to degrade the proteins, and mitochondria can then begin to regulate apoptosis through a series of um, apoptosis-regulating proteins, such as apoptosin. And talk, in completing about mitochondria, this mitochondrial apoptosis can uh, cause neuronal death and possibly synaptic death though it's not entirely clear whether or not mtDNA and Alzheimer's disease is well connected at this time. This is very unclear and there's not a lot of uh, beneficial research to prove this for a fact. The most more important of the two though is a more important element is amyloid beta. Amyloid beta is specifically a peptide chain which occurs naturally within the body working to, um, working to quell uh, neuronal activity such that it, the neurons don't fire um, overly, like, don't fire too fast. This, this peptide length is usually between 36 and 43 proteins, with 40 being the normal AB length and 42 being the toxic length. Um, and the presence of amyloid beta 42 can ultimately cause um, neuronal, synaptic, neuronal synaptic death and um, neurodegeneration. AB forms, or excuse me, amyloid beta forms when through the proteolysis of um, beta amyloid precursor protein with the assistance of BACE1 and 2 secretases, beta secretase and gamma secretase. This is essentially how this um, proteolysis works. A large um, amyloid precursor protein chain attaches to a shorter chains within the cell. The uh, BAC1 then works to cleave it at this point here, um, releasing another releasing amyloid precursor protein beta, a larger version which will then continue working as uh, time goes on. But then the precursor proteins such as um, uh, excuse me, beta secretase or gamma secretase will cleave the cleave it at the lower location, creating amyloid beta. And depending on the cleaving location, either amyloid beta 40 or 42 can form. When amyloid beta is formed by BACE, it can usually, um, if it's too toxic, it can either form um, oxidative species or it can lower the oxidative state of the cell overall. This can cause great oxidative stress within the, either the mitochondria as, it, as amyloid beta is toxic to the mitochondria or the cell. As this oxidative stress occurs, it will activate um, this protein, JNK and AP1, which then activate BACE, causing amyloid beta to be produced again, increasing the oxidative stress and increasing the damage to the mitochondria and to the neurons and synapses. Um, within the mitochondria as well, the amyloid beta will attack cytochrome C, um, causing the mitochondria to be open to oxidative stress and a lot of and, uh, apoptosis overall. And finally, with amyloid beta, amyloid beta can either occur in a fibril form or an oligomeric form. Um, either one of these will then can then um, begin to work on, begin to attach the microlia, which is within um, the neurons, within the synapses, and this will cause, this can ultimately cause inflammation of the microlia. As the microlia become inflamed, um, neuron, the neurons cannot function properly, and <coughs> the synapses cannot function properly, and you begin to see neuronal degradation and um, synaptic degradation. In this next part, I kind of wanted to build a little bit up about, off of what Turner said uh, earlier, 
and talk about synapse degeneration. Now synapse, synaptic function is very strongly uh, related to memory and obviously memory loss is one of the uh, most famous and largest symptom, well most important symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. So in Alzheimer's disease, synaptic function goes way down, it's very impaired. And uh, amyloid beta is actually thought to be the cause of this synaptic decline. And I'll show you a diagram in, next, in the next slide that uh, tr kind of tries to show what they think is the impact of um, amyloid beta on the synapse. So uh, synapses falter even before the neurons die in Alzheimer's. So synaptic function starts to decline before neurons start to pass away, and, and the rate far outstrips that. And some exper recent experiments with rats show that aged rats with synaptic damage show decreased spatial reasoning, reasoning, which is another major uh, symptom of Alzheimer's disease. Now, here, here's a diagram, and you can see these are the amyloid beta, and they stick to these, um, these signaling uh, proteins, and um, they, they really encourage um, endocytosis of these, sorry, not protein, they stick to these receptors in uh, synapse, and they, uh, they kind of facilitate endocytosis, which causes the, uh, the receptors to go away and be swallowed by the cell, and uh, then the synapse start, stops working and the synapse begins to uh, degenerate. And this is, this is heavily tied to the loss of memory, especially in the hippocampus, which is where this synapse generation originates and uh, speeds up the fastest. So uh, Turner already covered most of this in the amyloid beta. This is just another side effect of the amyloid beta clumps. But um, I just wanted to give a little background on the memory loss and where scientists begin to think it comes from in the synaptic decline which is caused by the amyloid beta and how it interferes with uh, various receptors and uh, inhibits uh, certain signaling proteins in the synapse. Now I'd like to speak a little bit about tau which is actually very closely related to amyloid beta. Now like amyloid beta it forms these little clumps uh, which are always present in, um, in Alzheimer's affected brains and it always actually comes after amyloid beta accumulation. So there's strong evidence that amyloid beta accumulation is heavily tied to um, these tau clumps, which are called neurofibrillary tangles, or p-tau, or just tau oligomers. So essentially tau, tau's role in the human body is, um, it's a protein that bonds to these things called tubulin, which make up microtubules which are used in exon transport, so the communication between neurons. And in an Alzheimer's affected brain, these tau's become hyperphosphorylated, and instead of sticking to tubulin, they begin to stick to other tau, which is a big problem because it forms these oligomers or p tau or neurofibrillary tangles, however you want to call it. And I'll kind of show you in this next, um, this next slide a diagram. So here you can see how tau is supposed to act in this top image. And these red dots are kind of the phosphorylation levels. And you can see it's sticking to these tubules, uh, well, the tubulin that makes up the microtubules and helping build these axonal transport microtubules. And here, there's a, there's a greater presence of these red dots or, um, or uh, the phosphorylation levels that I like to look at it. And finally, you can see with the even greater presence, which is normally four to four, uh, three to four times the normal level, level of phosphorylation, uh, these tau no longer help stabilize the tubulin and microtubules, and the destabilized, destabilized microtubules impair axonal transport, and that is a huge problem because the neurons can no longer really communicate with each other. Now, not too much is known about tau, but it is almost always present in an Alzheimer's affected brain and is actually a major pathological, um, it's a major way that they identify Alzheimer's in uh, people when they diagnose it. These neurofibrillary tangles are always there. And actually in this next slide I'm going to show you a, uh, a picture of a neurofibrillary tangle.
well, you can see, you can clearly see here these darker spots are the clumps of tau. And to be honest, there's not, they're just starting to research this now, so there's not too much information on potential cures or anything. But they are beginning uh, trials of small um, molecule inhibitors such as beta amyloid and um, even some extracts from grape seeds. They're really looking for ways to break up these tau clumps because when they form these oligomers, they're incredibly difficult to break up. So to sum up, uh, tau are these things that help build these microtubules in axonal transport, but due to what seems to be amyloid beta uh, buildup, they become hyperphosphorylated and end up clumping together and only bonding to each other instead of the tubulin that builds up these microtubules, which uh, causes a breakdown in axonal transport, uh, lowers brain, well, lowers the communication between neurons, and appears to play a large role in Alzheimer's disease. Thank you.